Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. My name is Patrick, and today I wanted to go over the control room in Cubase Pro 9.5. Um, this has grown to be pretty much, oh, this is only in the Pro version, so if you have artists or light edition, uh, you're not going to have this feature, so sorry. Um, but for you people that have the pro version and are confused by it or aren't using it, God forbid. Um, I'm going to show you why you should and some of the gotchas that trip me up along the way, getting it set up and fine tuned exactly how I want it. So let's get started. So control room lives over here in the right zone, which you can turn on and off. There's also this free floating window. If you need it to be somewhere else, you can enable this and put it wherever you want. Um, and you configure it by hitting F4 or going to your studio tab, audio connection, same thing. So there's a tab for control room. If this is turned off, you're not going to have anything in here. So it will be very bare. So you turn it on and you've got a whole slew of things um, you can add. So basically this is another bus output strictly for um, monitoring. So via four pairs of monitors, if you want, headphones, cue mixes for musicians, your talk back, um, external inputs. Uh, so I'll show you some of the ways that I use it and you can go from there. So first thing you need to do is add monitor. So you see I've got, I'm using two, so I have two available. It's going to ask you, you know, their configuration and blah, blah, blah. And once you do that, it gives you another pair, which you can rename, and then you assign it to your interface. So where, whatever output, if it's your main monitors, it's probably the one of the first two. The, so that's basically, let's see how I get. Okay, you want to remove something, right click and go to remove monitor, whatever you want to remove. So you can see I've got two pairs of uh, near field monitors right there. Also uh, headphones. So I use the Universal Audio Apollo interface and it calls uh, the first headphone jack Q1. So the second one I use for musicians and Cubase calls that Q1, but it's actually on my interface, it's Q2. So um, and I think you can do up to four of those. Yeah, four of those as well. Um, so I use two of those. You can uh, do a big session and give separate cue mixes to different musicians if you want. Um, I rarely need that, but you can. Uh, your talk back mic, if you've got a studio that people are in, um, this is pretty essential. So you just hook up a mic, set it on your desk, and connect it to one of your interfaces. So that becomes your talkback mic, and I'll I'll show you uh, <clears throat> I'll show you how to how that is set up. Where is it? How do I remove this? Huh. Guess you can't remove that one. Okay. Uh, external one and you can you can rename all of these to something uh easier to, to remember um i'm only using one of the external i think you can do like eight or something let's see add channel save it so six i guess so i use it and it's it's pretty convenient uh i've got it like for a cell phone three and a half millimeter jack that goes into a stereo pair of line inputs on my interface. And so if I have somebody that wants to play a reference track or something that's on their phone, 
they just plug into that. And then from the control room, <clears throat> I just go to external. So and now I can hear whatever they want me to hear. So, so those are kind of the basics of how, making sure that this is set up, making sure that you know, you've got uh, connections here. Now your outputs, which is also needs to be defined. You probably don't need the mono out. I use it for another purpose, but these do not need to be bused anywhere. Now I can actually bus it to here. And in this case, I am now double busing my signal as well as the control room goes to those monitors too. So that's a no-no. So one, by default, there's a preference. And the one I'm referring to is this exclusive device ports for monitor channels. So if you have this checked, it gives you a little warning to prevent you from doing that. So if I tried to bust something, I get this warning up. Uh, and that's nice if you um, are unsure about what you're doing. Um, that's, that's a good thing to have enabled. If you know what you're doing and need some more complex routing or something, um, it just gets in the way. So I turn it off. But if you're first getting it set up, I would leave that on. Since we're here, we'll go through these really quick. Preferences all relating to the control room. Show control room volume and transport panel. And that is not the transport panel that is docked in the middle of the screen when you're maximized, this one. It's the F2 one, the floating docking panel, and it's this. You can see if I move this, it's moving this knob over here. So that's what that refers to. I rarely use uh, the floating control panel but it's there if you uh, want, want it. Uh, preferences, okay. This uh, might save you from some horrible feedback loops or something. It will disable the talkback mode. You can have it in any of these choices. I recommend at least in record. So this is a gotcha. <laughs> this one had me perplexed at first for, well, I won't tell you how long, but it took a while and a lot of Googling and, and such. But basically, if you have, this refers to using phones or your main monitors for auditioning stuff in uh, Media Bay. So right, right now I can hear that kick because it's going through my my mains but if i were to go and uh, where is that check this and we go back to the media bay i don't hear anything <laughs> so you could be stumped for a while. And uh, I think I, I first encountered the problem when I was using headphones. I had live mics in here, so I, I had cans on everything and suddenly I could not hear stuff. So you need to make sure, and I probably should make a hotkey for that or something, but that that is one that caused me nights of frustration, so. Make sure the first thing you do, if you're not getting your auditions, look in there and make sure it's going to either your mains or your phones. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory. It just cuts the background music when you uh, click talk back. So uh, we talked about this. This is reference level. If you have a certain level you always listen to, you can go, and click this button and it'll go to that level. Um, main dim volume. When your phone rings or you need to talk to somebody, you can do that 
and it will dim it by whatever amount you have in the preferences. So you can actually talk to people. So, or you could do this. <laughs> so anyway, so on the, starting from the bottom up, talk back. So let's, let's get both of these up here. Okay, talk back, that turns your talk back on. So you, that mic you set up, your talk back mic, this one I don't have connected, you, you'll be talking through that, turn so people can hear you. And turn that off right there. Uh, your main volume, this is not your stereo out volume, this is not the volume here. This is the volume that your mix is going to go out to. Uh, the control room is a separate beast. So make sure you're aware of that. These little metronome buttons, you see them in cues and such. Where do you want the metronome? When you have the metronome enabled, it's going to play through the mains, the phones, the Q1. Uh, so if I don't want to hear the click track in the uh, studio, if I don't need it and it's just irritating, I can just turn it off there and I can leave it on for the musicians. And you'll see that in here, activate uh, metronome. So if that's highlighted, that's your pre count. So um, anyway, so that's what those are for. Um, these are your alternates. You can have A, B, C, and D. So I currently can switch from my eight inch near fields to my five inch near fields. This is your down mix pre preset. So if I wanna listen and see how something sounds in mono, which is a good practice because a lot of stuff, including Bluetooth speakers and such um, are mono. So you want to make sure uh, that you check and make sure that everything's in phase and your mono signal doesn't drop or sound thin. So um, I will check it there before I even go to mastering. So uh, <clears throat> then you can set up other down mix presets. I think most of these are for people doing yeah, surround stuff. So I don't really deal with that very much. So I don't have any of those, but they're there if you want it. So that, and this just cycles through your down mix preset. So since anyway, okay. Up above here, this is what you're listening to in your mains. As long as this is lit up, you're gonna go through your mains. So this determines what you're actually gonna hear through those mains. You're either gonna hear the mix bus, which is that this out right here, or external, what I was talking about, um, you plugging in a phone, or you can have any source, record player, CD player, what, whatever, any, any source, you can put it uh, in, in one of the external channels and access it that way. Q1, that's your headphone mix for musicians. That refers to this. So wherever that's going out, you determine right there. This is handy when you want to uh, dial in a mix for a drummer or a bass player and you have a rough idea of how it should sound. So before they even put on their headphones, I'll check it there and be, and be pretty satisfied that they're going to like it. So once I'm done with that, then I turn on the cue for them and um, make adjustments as needed. So, um, so that's Q. So oh, I got it on. There's a little gotcha. Here's the stereo mono thing. So this will show you what configuration it's in right now. So going up to headphones. So 
you have the same a smaller vo main volume for your headphones this enables listening and that is a function of the listen bus which in your mixer window get rid of some of these I don't think we need all this cluttering up Is that not getting bigger? There we go. So this L, this is to listen. So if I'm playing something, I can listen to this. This is a drum output. What it's doing, it is ducking uh, everything else. So if I had other stuff going on here, you could focus in on, on the, the drums, whatever is listen. Now, the reason you're not hearing, well, the reason you're not hearing anything is because there's nothing else on any other tracks, but um, if you click that, you can focus in on this. How much those other tracks are enough, are ducked is this. Six and a half decibels is your listen level. So everything else will get dropped six and a half decibels except for what's clicked on listen. So adjust that to taste. Uh, your click, I usually have it panned in the center, but occasionally I'll have somebody say, can I just get the click in one ear? Especially, especially for people that sing overdubs and they only want one ear on. So you have, have the other headphone. I have special headphones that will go onto the, onto their head, but some of them, uh, the bleed is horrible. So if you have the click going out there, it gets recorded back into your vocal mic. So you pan the click all the way to the one that's covered and adjust the volume. And hopefully you can't hear it at all when they're quiet, you know. But um, anyway, so that's that's the panning. This is the level of the click, you know. So you adjust the overall level there. That enables the metronome, um, same thing, same sources, your main mix, the externals, Q1 or Q2, you can hear those through um, the headphones. And I don't think you can down mix, yeah, no. So this is where you set up your monitors and there's, I've got one pair of monitors that is a lot louder First thing I do, I'd find your loudest, loud or your soft, quietest monitors, crank them all the way up, and then take your other pair of monitors and dial them back so it's kind of even. If you still have trouble getting the levels to match, because it should be when you switch from your monitor to monitor um, that the volume doesn't jump. So. There's, if you click on the inserts tab here, and this is a little kind of a bug or something, but you notice way down here and half the time it's hidden and half the time I'm hunting around for it, but it's in the monitors thing and you can actually adjust phase and your input gain. You see, I have this one dropped, um, 11.2 dB, and that's referring to this B monitor. If I go to my A monitor, you see that's at zero. So this is kind of how you compensate and make sure you have a consistent level across both of them. So that's in inserts. So switch back to the main. So, so those are your monitors. Uh, down mix presets, the, we talked about those channel surround 
Uh, did I talk about this? I don't even remember. Uh, but Q1 is your headphones. Now you can send, sometimes stuff's really easy and I can just send the same mix that I'm listening to to the headphones and they're fine with it. So I'll just do that most of the time. If they really need it specialized or they're not feeling the groove enough and I want a really, like in my opinion, a hard uh, mix to listen to, like how I listen to it, um, but what they need is something totally different, then I make sure uh, I've got cues selected. And you can do your, uh, how much your talk back, the, what's the level in their headphones. And here's the click level. Also the panning over here. And cue sends you do, I don't think you can do it from inspector, maybe you can. And some audio. Oh uh, yeah, you can. So you can do your cue sins here. I prefer to do it in uh, the mix console and you can make sure you click the racks here. Make sure cue sins is set up. Once you do that, now I have cue sins. I can open that up and enable so now i've got q1 going out it's sending this much level out of that bus so you have multiple uh, levels there you can also a handy thing is uh, let's see you can copy them there's another setting uh, forget where that is. Um, oh, I think it's up here somewhere. Yeah. So, there we go. <laughs> it's buried in this menu. Control room, Q channels. So, the nice thing is you can just select them all. Select the channels once you get a rough mix on your main faders uh, so you don't have to go in individually and mess with the Q level on each of them. You can just copy your, so you go to your control room and you say from selected mixer channels and you can change the Q send level, mix level. So if you're really getting into Q sends, you can do pretty much uh, everything here. So um, anyway, I don't want to talk about that too much, but uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there if you need it. Um, so that's your cues. Um, I think I've gone over most of the main stuff. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Just make sure about the double busing thing and you know not having something to find here uh, if you're using the control room um, and then that preference using the headphones versus your mains so those are the two things that can get you screwed up so if i miss something or you have any requests go ahead and leave it in the comments below and Watch another video, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you're notified next time I do a video. Thanks a lot, and I try to do them at least a couple a week. All right, take care. Have a good one. Bye.